Hello everyone and welcome to Wally Mods, the channel all about modding, hacking, and exploring your favorite video game. In this episode I'll be continuing my Factorio modding tutorial series by explaining a little bit about events and registering event handlers in Factorio. Before we start, I'm gonna show you where you can find all the information in the documentation as always. On the main Factorio API page, if we scroll down, we can see script, which is also a Lua bootstrap, and it provides an interface for registering event handlers. Clicking on this and scrolling down a bit, we can find a function called onEvent. Which as you're scrolling can down, see a down bit, here it also takes in a function event, which to takes pass an event the event or an table array to of events and is the handler to run. If we pass nil, it will unregister this event handler so that we don't have a if we were to pass nil to this function, it will unregister the handler so that nothing will run when this event is activated. It also takes in some optional filters, which I will explain later in the video. In this video, I'm going to be creating a quick mod, which activates an alert every time the player places an entity just to confuse them. There's no real meaning to this mod. To find all the events you can possibly use, we can click on this defines.events link. In this link, there is a very long list about every single event that is defined already in the game. If we want more information on this, we can click on this events page and it has a more detailed understanding of all the events possible. Now with my mod, I want to activate something every time a player builds an entity and immediately you can see on built entity is called when a player builds something. If I click into this, we can see that it passes through the event table, the created entity, the player index who placed the item, a stack, which is a Lua item stack, the item and some tags if there are any associated with the entity. Now all we need to do is use the on event function from the Lua bootstrap to link the define to the function. We can do that so with script.onEvent specifying our define in here and then adding a comma and passing in the entity placed function. Now with this entity placed function remember to include the event parameter because that will be automatically passed in from the script on event. Since I want to add an alert to the player, I get the player from game.getPlayer and the player index from the event table. Down here, I'm going to use the player to add alert. It takes in an entity and a define alert type. In this case, I'm using an entity destroyed so that the player thinks that an entity is being destroyed every time they place one. If you'd like to see all the defines for alert types, you can go into here for defines, alert type, and here are all the alert type defines. Now that we have this coded up, I'm gonna open Factorio and I'll show you what it looks like in game. Now I'm in game and I'm gonna show you how this mod works. So first I'm going to pick any entity I want that I can place down. And once I place it down, we should receive an alert saying that this entity is being destroyed. As we can see when I place it down, an alert box popped up in the bottom right saying one object was destroyed and if we zoom in all the way, we can see that it is actually this entity that we just placed. This will work for any entity that we place. It could be an assembly machine, fast inserter, another belt, whatever you place down. What happens if I want to filter out certain events so that I only get the events registered when, say, it's a container that I placed? Well, that's where filters come in, and I'm going to show you how to do that in code right now. Jumping back into the code, we can see in the on event do documentation that this function takes in an optional filters parameter. This filters parameter is a table and we can see how to define it if we go through the proper links. We see a list of the event filters, but I'm not sure which one to use for this exact define. If we go back to the on built entity define, which we saw, which we used for this event registration, we can see it can be filtered using the Lua player built entity event filters. Clicking on this, we can see how to set up this filter. Each filter is actually a table, which takes in a filter, the condition to filter on, a mode, which is optional, which is combining multiple filters, and also an invert, which inverts the condition. We're just going to be setting one filter, which is filtering out everything but placing containers so that every time a player places a container, 
they'll get an alert. This may be confusing, but all we need to look at is this filter can be any one of the following. But for our cases, we're going to be using a type filter. With this type filter, we can single out a certain type of prototype which will register this event. Coming over here, we can see I set a new filters local variable where the filter equals type, then a comma, then we have the type equals container. Once I have this table made, I pass it into the onEvent function with another comma. Now that this is created, I'm going to show you how this affects the results in game. So I loaded up my game and I forgot one very important thing. As we see over here, this event filter is an array of filters and each filter is a table. Right here, I only have one table instead of an array of tables. To fix that, I'm going to add some curly braces to the beginning and the end. And now this is an array of filters. Let's try this one more time. As you can see, the game actually loaded up this time. So let's see if it works. First, I'm going to try by placing an assembly machine. And as you see, no error pops up. So it's good so far. If I take a chest right here. I place it down because the chest is a container type it should give us an alert as we see whenever we place a chest we get an alert saying that this object was destroyed and our filters now work this is one simple type of filter that you can use there are also many other ones ghost rail rail signal so on so forth I would recommend looking into those if you need to use those for your own mods other than that, in this video, we learned how to register events. Nope. One quick other thing before I end the video. If you also remember earlier on when we were talking about the on event function, it also has a special feature about it, like the filters. If you can see, the event parameter is an event is a singular defines.event or an array of defines.events. So that means you can have this one function mapped to multiple events if you would like. I'll show you a quick demonstration of how you can have an array of events instead of just one singular one. As you can see, I created a local events variable, which is an array, which contains an on canceled upgrade event and an on built entity event. Now what this will do is anytime either an entity is built or an upgrade is canceled and it passes our filters. So the entity is a container. It will only then call our entity placed function, which adds an alert. So in this video, we learned how to register events, even multiple events, and also how to use filters. Events end up being a great chunk of many mods, which include real runtime capabilities. If you'd like to learn more about events and event handlers, or anything about factorial modding, you can look at the documentation, or you can ask me, or you can go over to Discord and join the Factorio server and ask in the modding help section. Other than that, I hope you enjoy this video, and if you're enjoying this series so far, consider subscribing so that you can get updates on every other video that I upload. You can also follow my Twitter at ModsWally to get more regular updates on my videos. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.